This is a pretty cool hack. Not only how to link an Excel table to Power BI, not a pivot table, an Excel table, but also how to quickly write the code to generate the table you need with just a few clicks. This is pretty awesome. Let's go. Right, I'm in Power BI and I spotted this button, Show Query. I'll show you how we get there in a second. But that gave me this idea for this video. Okay, so let me show you this. I'm, I've published a Power BI report to Power BI. And Analyze in Excel is a way of creating a pivot table linked to this Power BI data. But I don't want to do that. I want to create an actual table. Um, Matt Allington has done a couple of good posts on this in the past. I'll put some links in the notes below and it's given me the sort of thought about this. A new feature, okay, if you click on the data set, you go in and you can build your own table. All right, so I want to go and I want to get the customer city, the customer group and name from the product table. I'd like to get the product name and then from my sales data, if I scroll down, I'd like to get my actual sales. This is the table that I'd like to put in Excel and have it link live. Okay, this is the thing. This is the cool thing. So check this out. I'm just going to click on this show query and I get this query. This is the query I need for Excel to generate the code to create the table. So I'm going to go copy to clipboard. Okay, so that's done. It's in the clipboard. Right. Next little step. And there's probably a better way of doing this. And somebody hopefully in the comments will flag this. Um, check this out. If I go back. Okay. And I'm in here into the data set. And I say analyze in Excel. You could do it from the report. So that's my first point of port of call. Okay. I'd go analyze in Excel just to create the linkage. And this is what Matt flagged in his articles. Open an Excel for web, and I'll just open up, um, I'll create a little pivot table, and then I'll open it in desktop. So here we go. Honestly, the little, the ability to create these little link tables and have row level security apply, so you, the table filters for the cities that people are allowed to see, it's worth staying tuned for, okay? So here we go. I just want the actual measure, by, it doesn't really matter what I put in here at all. Okay, I'm just gonna put Rose Customer City. Okay, this is the important thing. I'm gonna open this in desktop. Okay, so editing, open in desktop. And then I'm gonna drill through by double clicking on one of the numbers. So here's the pivot table. I'm just gonna double click on a number. This is the, this is the first part of the trick. Okay, so here we've got a table. And it's got various columns, all right? And you can actually edit the code behind here. So right click, you can go to table, edit query. It gives you a small box down here. This one isn't resizable, but there is another way. You can also go via right click, table, external data properties, and then click on this little icon and then definition, and this gives you a resizable box if you want it, okay? However, the magic code is here. This is the magic spot. You can simply do something like evaluate customer table. That's what the name of my table was, customer table. Okay, click OK, click OK. So here's my customer table. So check this out. If I go back in here, table, remember that code I copied? Uh, external data properties, click on that, go to definition. If I paste in here, this is the code I copied and click OK. Check it out. That's the table. That is awesome. All right. And the cool thing about it is this. All right. Check this out. I'm going to delete everything in that table. I'm going to save this file and then give it to a colleague, a different user, and Add some row level security for that colleague so that when they open it, they're only going to see Perth data. 
So quickly, the role level security, I'm in my desktop file, modeling, manage roles. Okay, I created, click the create button called Perth, and I put a filter where customer city equals Perth, and then I published. Okay, so I've done that. Let's go back into the browser. So I'm in my browser, I go to my three dots against my data set, I go to security, and there's my role that I set up, and I put the other user, uh, pro user, I'll put them in, okay? Pro user, add them. So there now, and save, and I'm now gonna get the pro user to open up the file. Let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. I haven't actually shared the data set with the end user. I've got to do that as well. Okay, so I've got to go into my workspace. I've actually got to go to manage permissions and give access to this data set. Okay, so add a user. I don't want them to share or do any of that. I just want them to build content. Um, and the person is just the pro user. Again, got to add them in. Okay. Awesome, grant access, cool. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go and jump in, log in as the other user and refresh and see what happens. So here we go, we're gonna double click on the file that's been shared with the other user. I'm logged in as pro user. Okay, check it out. I'm gonna right click and refresh and the data will update. Awesome, okay, but check it out, Adelaide, okay, they shouldn't be able to see all these, they can see everything. There is an issue when trying to test this yourself. If you've ever been signed into Excel, it appears to remember your credentials and I cannot work out how to get rid of those, but I tested this out on a completely different computer that I'd never signed into and it worked. So I'm just hoping this is a bug of me being in and out of different um, users. Uh, so, but awesome, okay, fully refreshable, linked table rather than a linked pivot table, which has its uses, lots of use cases. Okay, let me know what you think. Leave some comments in the notes below. Please subscribe, turn on the little notification, and I'll catch you in the next video.